levels of energy transfer mechanisms. Oh, pardon me. I was not expecting any visitors this evening. Yes, I am Dr. Eve. But who might you be? The paper, you say? My apologies. I don't quite seem to remember. Wait. You're not with the Observer, are you? The Daisy Side paper? Ah, well, that explains things. Yes. Yes, I do remember now. I take it you received my letter then? Ah, uh, very good. Please, don't be shy. Come closer. I'm sure you have lots of questions of which I would happily oblige to give the answers to. Come, come. Now, I know how busy you journalists can be. Always swamped with tales of murder, politics, and all sorts of other woes. But I assure you that your time shall be well spent. Actually, no. I will only assure it. I will promise it. I can promise you that your time here will be both fruitful and insightful, as well as exciting. You see, I have been working on something incredible, something spectacular. I, I tried my utmost hardest to convince the board of medical governors to lend me an ear, but alas, they wouldn't listen. They never did. They didn't have it in them, so I figured that perhaps if my little subject earned some satisfactory press coverage, then maybe, just maybe, they will finally shine their attention upon my discoveries. Oh, the board and myself go far, far back. To say that we have a little history with each other is a severe understatement, my dear. Although, if you'd so desire a quote for your paper, then let it be this. Myself and the medical professionals upon the board share both an intimate and tiresome relationship. One that closely resembles that of a marriage gone stale. I approach them eagerly with my modern, revolutionary discoveries. And then they listen with disingenuous ears before screaming words of madness and folly. They believe my work to be that of the devils, but I believe it to be that of the common man. Mankind is evidently capable of great things. Paintings, literature, machines, labor. But it goes unnoticed. It's taken for granted before being spat upon by those who believe they're superior. I can't stand for it. I won't stand for it. And that's why you, my dear, are so important. What do I mean? Well, you know how to make the people listen. To make the government listen. Your involvement in the free press is nothing short of a blessing upon the nation. It is a tool the common man can utilize to bring their ideas forth into the vastness of the world. With you and your abundance of skill, I can finally prove how significant my research is. People will no longer pity me for my insanity, but instead will praise me for my ambition. But I can only achieve this with your journalistic aid. So, what questions do you have for me? The more the merrier. Ah, yes, my subject. Well, for the last five months, I have been dabbling in the art of galvanism, along with my independent studies in natural philosophy and mathematics. I found galvanism to be an extraordinary topic and decided to follow in the footsteps of the man himself, Luigi Galvani, and experiment. You see... I started with small, deceased animals, rodents and whatnot, and I'd link them to an electrical current 
and send controlled shocks into their minuscule systems. And before I knew it, they were alive again. Their eyes would snap open in mere moments, brimming with confusion and panic. And then I would release them, allowing them to enjoy their second life. <laughs> I know, I know. It all sounds rather shocking, but this is only the beginning of my marvelous journey. Also, I promised you shock, did I not? In my letter to you. Mm hmm. I never fall back on a promise. Never. After all, there is no benefit in an empty promise. I am a man of science. I'm supposed to follow through with my words. <clears throat> right. Yes, continuing. I found that experimenting on rodents limited my research into galvanism extortionately. And if I was going to make any admirable progress, then I would have to find a larger test subject. Something considerably larger than that of the average rat. And as I gazed out of my window, onto the busy street below, it suddenly occurred to me. Humans die, often naturally, sometimes by another's hand and my focus began to shift towards the latter. What if I could apply my research, my experiments, to our dearly departed? Those whose lives were snuffed out in an instant like a candle, the loved ones taken in their prime. What if I gave them a second chance? <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't call it resurrection, so to say. Rather, rebirth, allowing those who are freshly buried to crawl and whine out of the soil like newborns, like they once did with their mothers. On this piece of paper, I recorded the average number of homicides per week, and the numbers revealed that nearly three people are killed in the span of six to seven days. Now, I am not quite sure how you feel about this. Since meaty murder stories are what your wages rest upon. But personally, I find this to be a catastrophe. No life deserves to be cut short. And this is where I began my work. I sourced myself. In total, nine corpses from the local cemetery. And then... Of course they were ethically sourced. I'm not a monster. Besides... These were the corpses of killers and other like-minded criminals. So even if I did obtain them through unconventional means, it quite frankly wouldn't matter. At least, it wouldn't matter as much as it usually does for this sort of thing. No, I didn't intend on rebirthing them. Those are merely test cadavers, my dear. They gave me the freedom to make mistakes without guilt. And in the process preparing me for the real thing. And oh, did they prepare me. Overall, I made 72 mistakes. Which I must say I'm quite proud of myself for. My lack of mistakes meant that I was finally prepared to achieve what I had set out to do. If you would please follow me. My family said I was incapable of such a feat. Friends yelled at me. And that board of governors scoffed and screamed. But tonight I will show you something that will leave everyone poked up. They will feel nothing but embarrassment and regret as soon as my subject dominates the headlines. Hmm, you're right. I never explicitly stated what my subject was, did I? Well, this is because... I'd rather you witness it for yourself, my dear journalist. 
Please, enter. It's beautiful, is it not? I handpicked each limb and organ to ensure that perfection was paramount. Come, come, take a closer look. I call him Nova, a man who, like an idle star, will explode with light before returning to its original state. The electric sparks of life will course through his veins once more and pull him back to the realm of the living. I shall grant him the gift of life, like a god. Look at his lustrous hair, his pearly teeth. Why, I've never seen any more pleasing sight. I've created an angel. My journalist, don't you agree? Your eyes have remained fixed upon my beautiful creation since you entered the room. Good. I'm glad. This means that I can proceed. Observe. Yes, yes, that will do. Now, for the roof. Now that I've raised the body and opened the roof, all we need to do is wait. Now we must be patient. For what? Why? For a strike of lightning to kiss the body of my Nova. You see, everything is prepared. His limbs are sewn tightly. His vitals are in their respective places. And all he needs is an electric impulse to shock his system into action. We must wait for the storm to peak and the heavens to part to fire my work, my preparations. It's all leading up to this and you will get to bear witness. Oh, but Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gifted it to mankind out of pure kindness, which rests within his heart. And I shall do the same. Like Prometheus, I shall gift the flames of life to this creation, born from my own two hands, and watch with glee as he opens his eyes to the world around him. Once my Nova takes his first breath, he will embody perfection. I will achieve the secret to eternal life, People will no longer simmer in their woes over the nature of death, as I have found a way, a way of warping the natural order to my command. I have become Mother Nature herself, and once my creation rises, the masses shall scream my name with utmost devotion. Everyone shall know the name of Dr. Eve. Yes, and... The Board of Governors will have no choice but to listen to me. You must deliver your article to them directly. I insist. I can pay you extra to do so. You promise you will? Good. Thank you, my dear. I'll let it be known how your actions have helped me so. Yes, yes, my breakthrough is nearly upon us. After endless days of study and toil, I will succeed in discovering the cause of generation and life. Nay, more, I myself will become capable of bestowing animation upon lifeless matter. Now, angels, part thy heavens and leave your sweet kiss of life upon my Nova's lips. Show us your divine power. This is perfect, absolutely perfect, but there's something else I must do. Within this syringe is a chemical compound I like to call Reditio, and this will aid the body in its process of revitalization. All I have to do is inject the compound into his chest, like so. And now, 
things turn back. This is it. Any moment now. Prepare to witness the power of natural science. It's alive. It's alive. My, my beautiful Nova. Oh, my Nova. How perfect you are. How beautiful you... Nova. You're killing me. 